tight on there so I can get my max line capacity going again. So. Still looks a little bit dirty. So, uh, no, the reason by end because I, I did hear a dirty joke about uh, bubbles, but it was uh, the fat, fat girl next door. That guy got in trouble for taking a bath with bubbles. <laughs> bubbles was the fat girl next door. That's why. That's why. That's why right when I slowed down, I heard that part. I was like, uh oh. <laughs> so I heard that joke before. <laughs> time I'm talking to people about spooling and stuff it's just an opportunity for more knowledge to be passed right. um, but what I can do is I'll show you that not y'all got a little time or y'all yeah. okay um, okay so this will give me some time to finish downloading this reel and get it to where my line is Okay, the boat guides on them, yeah. All right, so now you can look at my line. You can see how it's almost straight up and down up this way. Yes, you don't see that X pattern? That X pattern creates gappage. It's like stacking PVCs. When you stack PVC, you don't stack them like this. You stack them side by side right. to try to get the most line capacity. Right. Well, the hollow core braid is like stacking bed sheets. They, you know, how you, no matter how many you put on there, they just collapse on each other and they right. slide sideways, try to fill in all that gap. Holocore braid will not do that, or solid braid will not do that. Holocore will do that. That's why I use a holocore because I also get better line capacity. Is it because it squeezes together a little bit? It, it actually goes flat. That's what I'm saying. It squeezes and flattens out. Or, or... Yeah, so you can see it one way like this, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of thick. Now it kind of almost disappears right there. And actually, that was a good section I pulled out. Is that salt on there or is that fray? That's actually frayage right there. See, see, see all the cactus hairs on it? Yep. Well, I'm glad I stopped there. Look, yeah, you can see more of it right there, too. Let me see. Well, I am getting ready for shark fishing season, so maybe I should cut that little section out. thousand yards would be three, ten. But how many? How much is your real hold? I guess it, one, it, it, it will hold 1,500 yards of 100 pound. Easy, right? About twelve fifty of one hundred thirty all the way through. And that's of the break. That's of the break. You don't put the mono. Okay? As long as you that's don't on need one thirty. No, that's on his fifty. No, oh, yeah. The uh, the thing with that though is like we were talking earlier is that your braided is your braided one hundred thirty is a lot smaller than your monofilament one thirty. Oh yeah, the three to, at least three to one. For every yard of mono you so put on, you, you lose more, that many more yards of braid. Man, wouldn't, man, 130 mono, would, that would be almost like weed eater line, huh? It's pretty thick. This is, this is 130 right here. Mono weed eater Yeah. And this is 130 of holocore. Yeah, that's the difference. What brand of holocore is that? This is a uh, tight line. It's, oh, no, 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 this is Cortland right here. I've had this on for a minute, but... I've actually had it on three years now. I've heard different stories about how um, how often they change people change up their, their braid. 
guess it all depends on how much you use. How often you go fishing? Well, okay. For I'll make it plain and simple. If my braid never touches the water, I won't ever have to change it. It's got like a 20 year lifespan. Gotcha. Now, if it's in the water, obviously. Salt water? Not the salt water doesn't eat it up. It's the the rocks and everything else that you're coming up against, boat traffic, jet skis, kayakers, like all of them are the ones that mess up your braid. Fish, you know what I mean? Um, sharks. Sharks. <laughs> sharks especially, yes. But, like I said, this is a prime opportunity to show you that was a bad section of just all that little bit of fridge. Right. So now I've got good line back on there. So I'm going to splice in and maintain my line capacity so at the very beginning obviously I needed a little more braid on the top like mine completely filled so when you actually come back to us and stuff like that and you say hey man I think there's a fray deep in there we down spool it re spool it and you'll see the way I spool up we keep our fingers on the line every single inch of the way and the reason for it is you, these two fingertips are your most sensitive in your hand. You can feel any anything. Bad in yeah, yeah. So as it's coming through at a high rate of speed, it feels like a big old speed bump. Yep. So that makes us stop and check it. And that's how. The crane cables, we do the work. We fill them that way. It's cables, steel mm -hmm. cables. Uh -huh. Same thing when they're going. When we're going up, we'll run our hands along them. Mm -hmm. You can feel the difference on them. So we know there's a bad spot in that. There you go. Same yeah. scenario. So. Obviously, especially them strap cranes. And, and right here, I'm inserting the needle into the hollow core. That's crazy you doing that. I've never seen that done before. But I've also never used hollow core. Mm -hmm. It's the same concept as welding wire. Plugs plug. It's hollow. Is it really? You can do fun. And then I'm going to insert this way. And these are my tournament rods. These, this is my gear. Anything I do in the shop is because I've already fished it, I tested it, I know it's not going to fail. Because at any given time, what I'm doing for you, I'm doing for myself. The leader's the same way. Uh, everything good that's for in a here. Business to actually try out everything and verify whether it's good or not. Oh yeah, yeah that, that's you, my tackle box. <laughs> any guys that this. any any guys that are in here when I'm rigging up for for a tournament, they love it because they they see everything that I pull off the shelf is everything that y'all y'all buy. I mean, I don't I don't build you know individual gear in the back and then I go fishing with it. Right. No, I go yeah, right to the same stuff we do. Uh, yeah, buy from you. exactly. I got you. He got his own stash in the back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally different. Stuff. Yeah, the high quality stuff. And then, right. No. no. They get too expensive doing that. <laughs> nope, nope, I ain't about it. That's how, actually, it was because of my gear that my team name started. We were actually fishing out at Bob Hall Pier, and they, uh, we were all catching, and, and everybody was fishing together, and I was because I was already selling my fishing tackle. And so they would ask, well, what team are you on? Like, we're not a team. We just all use the same gear, so we help each other out. And they're like, oh, okay, and they'd walk away. They wouldn't hear, they wouldn't hear us. And then after a while, I was like, man, I need to develop a team name. And they're like, why? I said, because that's all they want to know is what team we are. I bet y'all start selling once we do. <laughs> sure enough, it created the team name. Oh, really? And what gear do y'all use? Boom, started making sales just like that, just night and day. But it was because the gear I use actually What's is the out team there. name? Team Hard Life. Hard Life? Okay. Makes yep. sense because it's the name of your shop. Well, that's where the shop name came from, too, because <laughs> we all know what it's like or how hard it life is to actually be able to enjoy what you love to do and that's going fishing going hunting anything playing sports right and so for me it is fishing uh, right. another buddy of mine he's the one who actually came up with the name uh, he used to always say while we were out there on bob hall pier uh hunter is his name is what we used to call him hall um he would always say it you know seven o'clock in the morning sitting out there drinking a beer and man this is a hard life and this and that so so yeah, that, well, actually, I asked him one day because I was wanting to make a team name because of all of that. And I asked him, you know, can I can I use that saying for my name? He goes, dude, I'd be honored. I said, awesome. So I did. Right. And it's been like that ever since. So, and that's shoot, at least 18 years ago now. Really? So, long, long, long time. Like five, Nick. Mm -hmm. He's about five years old then. Mm -hmm. Just about. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to go ahead and do real quick, I'm going to zero out my line counter, 
and I'm going to take it back up to where the, the reel was filled with that uh, original line on there. The reason I'm doing that is to show y'all the line capacity difference between what they did by pulling by hand when we got that last cut off and what I'm going to do with my machine here. And I need to get rubber band. What is wrong with the original line again? Okay, when I was showing him the line, I wanted to add more line to it. However, when they reeled it in, you see how the line looks almost straight up and down? Okay, well, when I was down spooling it, I was showing you how you saw a bunch of X patterns in it. Yeah. X patterns gaps out the line. I want maximum line capacity, so I'm down, I down spool it to where I know I've reeled before, and I'm going to spool it all back on. So even in that little section, you see how straight the line is? Yes. That's the way I reel all the way to the top. And that's how I get great line capacity. And that's the way I fish it too. That's been one of the biggest questions is like, how can, how can you fish line like that on a reel and not get all, well, it's because I concentrate your, you know, or it becomes second hand to me that when I fill a reel, the way I fill for y'all is the way I fish. And so I've showed people how it works out that way time and time and time again. And that, that way I increase your knowledge of your fishing reel and your abilities because then while you're reeling in, you're actually getting all your line back on there and stuff. So, and as you can tell, the handle's going crazy, getting cranked in. And actually, I'm gonna write that down. That's 200 yards of the white that I went down. And then on my green, that way I know when I hit my white, that's how far my top shot is. And if I'm not mistaken, my green should be about a thousand yards. <laughs> yeah. Yes. say on here is I'm willing to bet they put monofilament on your bottom oh, to, tie to tie it into the reel yeah that's a big X printer nope <laughs> there it goes <clears throat> oh it just came off the pool yeah when the, this pull up here is too far to the one direction or the other it'll pull it off my little roller over here Slipped off again this way. I was all the way to the right, and this one's all the oh, way to the left. Right. Yeah, because it popped off of here and caught the the reel, the edge oh, of the reel. Shit. Yeah, it, yeah. It, normally it's not supposed to happen because. Um, I'll show you. I would have been lazy and did that. <laughs> yeah, it was full off off center. Yeah. So uh, I'm all the way to the left over here, and this line is all the way over here to the right. So yeah, and I'm trying to guide it off to the right, and it's pulling off. But which is fine by me, because now, again, like I said, okay, this is a bad spot in the line. Let's fix that. 
normally with the solid braid or if you have mono and this and that then you have this big old blob of a knot I don't have to worry about it with the hollow core oh, no. <clears throat> so technically do you want a longer pole or no, do you want a shorter pole I want short short poles yeah those are my big rig rods when I'm kayaking on the beach Six footers? Seven and a half, six foot, yeah. Well, the one I got is an eight. I got a ten, nowhere near that. Well, you got to think, if you're playing on a seesaw, do you want to be on the long side or the short side? The short side. Why? I want to be on the long side, so I sit on the ground. Exactly. The long short side, you're going to be up in the air all the time. Yep, you'll never touch the floor. So who's it's got nice leverage? Ball, what is it? Who's got leverage? You were the fish. Oh, the fish has the leverage. It's yeah. Got a longer rod. Exactly. Yeah. The only time that helps you is if you have a reel that does not have the balls to back up the length. So these reels have plenty of balls. So when I go to cranking, I'm moving line out of the water. The longer rods, all, all you're doing is bowing the rod like this. Oh, okay. Well, I got this super stiff, unlimited class 10 foot. That means you got no bow. And you're doing this, but your body is doing this. Right. You ain't holding a 130 pound test in leverage. No. I'm sorry. Yeah, you got to be. No, that makes sense. The way you put it. <clears throat> yeah. So real quick, that's my splice. That's crazy how that works. Yeah, and you can feel it. That's the center of the knot. The end is the end is end over here. Transition, you can't really tell. It's yeah, just the center where it. I yeah, that, and I'll, the only reason you're feeling that now is because I didn't clean it up. Like, pull the extra. Yeah, gotcha. that's all you got to do. <clears throat> so again, like I said, if you're missing that much line, that's all you come in, pay for that much line. That's yeah. where the cost of savings comes into play. By doing it right the first time. Yeah, exactly. I'm almost considering just having to put sure it's done with it and not have to worry about the risk of it possibly. Ah, oh, dude. I try to tell you. Instead of saying no, you didn't have to be. You could have told me. Yeah. yeah. thousand yards right there so now I'm connecting to my top shot which is the lighter green line right there oh much thicker line no oh, it's no it's thicker it's because the 130 oh. is in the 130 so that's actually 260 pound oh so, you're talking about 260 pound for the knot for the strip for, for this area, yes, it becomes 260 pounds. So why did you trend? Well, because you see all this gap right here. Uh -huh. I still have room for line, and so that's why I wanted. When I was looking at, it, I was like, man, that's empty. Maintain a little bit now, rather than wait until I'm a thousand yards and then I need to replace a thousand yards. Oh, I see. I'm o I'm always gonna have. Uh, You'll always see my reels filled because I'd rather add in a little bit after each trip rather than wait until I'm halfway down the spool to try to replace it all. Yes. It's cheaper, you know, nickel and dime it all the way back up and you, you're fine. The reason it's all black is because charcoal had, had fallen off the barbecue pit as we were transit. 
So all that fell on the rail, so all that's that. So, but that's all right. It ain't gonna oh, hurt. Oh, so this is new line then? This is new line. Gotcha. This is line that was originally on there. But it's the same type of line? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's hollow quarter, hollow quarter. So, like I was explaining to him, you saw how the reel was filled earlier? Like, it was above this little lip here of the yeah. spool. I took it down a little bit, not much, but still, now it gives me the opportunity to come in and maintain my line capacity. I like it completely filled. Right. So, that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. I'm going to fill it up with more line, and I'm going with a different color, because right here is a thousand yards that I've come up. So, you want to kind of let yourself know what you're at as far yeah. as line. Exactly. I got yep. you. Two. I'm fishing with brand new line again. Looking pretty. Here. Stand up. Oh, stand up right here. Just don't get into nothing, dude. If you get into it, you better get a job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I got five total and a grandson. How old are you? Yeah. How old are you? Oh, I'm 43. How old are you? I've got, uh, I've got uh, one. Okay. Uh, through marriage, there's five. Yeah. One I have with her, and then I have one from a previous relationship. So. Is this 31? What is that? Is this 3,100 yards? Yes. I have 4,200 yards of 130 that I normally put on there. Oh, is that an 80 wide? It's yeah, this, this is an 80 wide, yes. The one up on top, is that's a 130 by T-Rex. Or by Avid, sorry, it's a 130 T Rex by Avid. And the T Rex is just that added drag capacity? That is correct. So, right now, when I stopped it, I was just a hair short under the lip. I added 275 yards. Hmm. I was looking at what he said earlier. Look, look at my arm. Cross. That's crazy. Cross. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The guy was going like this. <laughs> I didn't notice it until you was, you was talking about it here, and now I started looking at mine. Mm -hmm. and there's still a lot of room for a lot of line on there, actually. Yeah, true, it is. Skeet shoot this Saturday. You got a shotgun? Got a crossbow. Let's do it. I'll bring my 22. You bring a crossbow. We'll skeet shoot. <laughs> nah. That 22 would be harder than hell to skeet shoot. I, I tried yeah. to be deadly accurate. I just got a big magazine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, this is, like I said, the down and dirty of why well, the, I, I go with hollow core all the way through. I know and what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring my reel over to you one of these days here. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, it won't be this week because I got a long week this week. But uh, bring the line over and have you pull that monofilament out and see if that's hollow core underneath. If it is, you can tap into that and restring it or whatever. Uh, and I would still suggest letting us take it all the way down. We, we charge. It's twenty five. Yeah, $25 to make sure that that knot is done yep. correctly. Because, um, like I said, I've seen a lot of shops throw on some th thin well, mono. I just look at that. Now. You got me double guessing what three, three cards did. Yeah, so... But yeah, there we go. Now this one's back to getting on the rod, and we will go from there. So, gotcha. Yeah, no, uh, I'll definitely bring it up so you can go through it and check it out for me. Awesome. And, um,.